what's going on guys? Shane here in Singapore at Evolve MMA with Ku Rong. Now Ku Rong is a three-time Lumpini champion, well over 300 Muay Thai fights, but he's also uh, was the one FC MMA strawweight champion. So he was well-versed in not only Muay Thai, but also MMA. So the following clips are from a personal training session that I did with Ku Rong. And the focus was on how can we use the Muay Thai clinch for MMA? Now, Kru Rong said, before we focus on the clinch itself, let's talk about the stance, because there are specific details that make the Muay Thai stance ineffective for MMA. The number one reason is obvious, and it's for takedowns. In Muay Thai, your stance is going to be a little bit taller. You're going to have those squared hips, and it's a focus on a strong structure so that you can block and check kicks and return quickly without breaking your foundation. In MMA, you want your hips lower to the ground, and you also want your hips angled because that's going to make you more agile. You're going to be able to move front to back, side to side quicker, and here Kru Rong talks about the importance of that. When your stance is a little bit wider, and when you have that bladed stance, you're going to be more mobile. You can see his left hip is in the front, right hip is in the rear. This is a much better body position for that agile footwork if you have to cut angles, if you have to retreat or circle out. If you're going to play Toro with a bull, you're not going to stand with your hips squared to them. Now here he's explaining if he's reaching for that lead leg, if he's going for a single leg, then just step that leg back and then redirect with that hand. Distributed because of takedowns. If someone shoots in for that single, they try to angle pick or something like that, you can always redirect, which is in Muay Thai very common to redirect and step to the side, but just draw that leg back. In Muay Thai, our feet are a little more narrow, which makes us taller. The reason why we stand like that is so we can lift our leg up to block check kicks, as well as quickly counter with a kick of our own. Whereas in MMA, you got the smaller gloves, and it's more of a one-shot kill. Okay. So in Muay Thai, it's very back and forth. You usually just stand in front of each other and trade a lot. But he's saying in MMA, you got to move. you got to create those angles. 50-50 in both your stands. You can't be too tall, and you got to be agile creating angles. Now, you also want to be dangerous. You want to give them a reason not to shoot in for that takedown. So Kru Rang demonstrates the switch knee and how when they shoot in for that shot, boom, they're going to run right into your knee. And then, of course, always redirect at that point. Use your hands. My question for him at that point is, do you risk getting taken down? Can someone just power through, since you're on one leg, grab a hold of your knee and shoot through? To which he explained, yes, that's the importance of timing, but also the retraction of your knee too. So after you land that knee, you shoot it back and then redirect with your hand. After throwing a strike, whether it's a kick or a knee, it's very important because they're a good wrestler, they're going to snatch your leg. So after you throw that knee, boom, you shoot that leg right back, just like we talked about. And then redirect with the hand. Now Kurong is teaching me the sprawl, right? Someone shoots in, good wrestler, trying to take me down, take my legs out from underneath. He's demonstrating how to create the leverage, put the pressure down, break my posture, and avoid that takedown. So what he's going to do is he's going to shoot his hips forward as his legs go back, and he breaks my posture by pushing down on the back of my head. From here, he advances to a more dominant position to where he could throw strikes or change his position again, which we'll look at in a minute. The penetration shot when you're shooting in for that takedown, for the most part, is linear, right? It's coming straight in. So if you don't create the angle, then you have to sprawl. What Kurang is showing is push down literally on the back of the neck, break the posture so that they can't get the leverage underneath and get under your hips to lift you up and take you down. But ultimately, the most important thing with the sprawl, he says, is don't let them break your posture. Don't let them bend you into a C shape like that because then they're going to be underneath of you and they're going to get that takedown. Instead, he says, really bump them with the hips. Hit them with your hip on the way in. This way, it's going to break my posture. He stays on top. And from here, he gets in the more dominant position, gets his hooks in. And then check this out. Crew Ronk showing off a little bit. And then we started focusing on the clinch itself. He said, if you have a dominant position clinch, both hands on the inside of the back of the head, he could push up on the elbows, get underneath, and go right into that penetration shot, get that double leg. He said, so instead, to play it safe, what he likes to do is instead having one hand on the bicep, he goes underneath and gets one underhook. So one arm underneath the armpit, grabbing on the shoulder, and then the other hand can redirect the head. When you have at least one underhook, you can stop them from lowering their level. So talking about the clinch in Muay Thai, it's about controlling to stop elbows. It's controlling the head and setting up knee strikes and sweeps, but in MMA, it's wrestling, so the underhook is very important here. So that's what Kurang is demonstrating. In addition to that, you got good control of them. You can break their posture, pull them into knees. We can also release on the head, open up the door, boom, and throw an elbow strike, all the while controlling them and stopping them from attacking our legs. And watching these clips here, I can see I'm missing a very important detail. I'm gripping on the shoulder with my right hand, and I'm pinning it with my head, but I'm not using my right shoulder. My right shoulder should be the fulcrum. That should be really putting pressure on Kurong's elbow. This hand 
The pressure from my head and my hand are moving in one direction, and then my shoulder should be moving in the opposite direction. And the whole time. So you can use your head too? Yeah, yeah. Can I have a little? You need some time on it. One, one, two, three. And then this, 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 can I have a little? At this point, you can't see my face or hear what I'm saying, but it's a very uncomfortable position. You can see he's pulling me with his arm while pushing on my head with the opposite hand. And I said, the only thing I got from here was probably just pull guard. And he says, yeah, I wouldn't be so gentle, though, if I had you in that position. I'd probably just yank you down to the ground like this, stick your face into the mat, and then start going to work. So another option is using your free hand, that left hand of Kru Rang there, to grab the back of the head. And he said if you ever feel them lower their level as if to shoot in for a takedown, take the target away, so shoot that leg back, and snap down. Really pull down on their head as you do that. So one hand always has the underhook. You can see the left hand there grabbing on my shoulder. The other hand now is free, so he can push on the head, post off to throw elbows, to throw knee strikes. He could pull down to the ground, or he can just disengage. Push off, create distance, and go back to striking range. So again, just to recap, this is the kind of positions I'm used to in Muay Thai. This hand fighting to stop the elbows from coming in. But now he's saying we can easily transition to get this underhook, grab on the shoulder. The free hand then controls the head. He said if you have the steering wheel position with both hands on the bicep or you're on the hands on the back of the head, it's too easy to just push up on the elbows, get underneath, and attack the legs. He said if he's going to throw knee strikes, he wants to have that underhook. This way he can safely throw that knee while keeping them from lowering their level, and then he can break their posture. He said range is everything. If someone shoots in for that takedown from far away, he can get that underhook as they're reaching for the leg. Right here he has me practicing. You can see I miss it and then the right hand goes underneath. Get that underhook and then the free hand controls the head. I can throw my knees, I can throw my elbows or just snap them down. And again he shows the importance of creating an angle. You can see him pivot out and like a bull going for the red cape, I just miss completely. He said, in order to do this successfully, in order to optimize it, don't go for the rear underhook, right? Because that's just going to stand you right back up. He said, instead, go for the lead underhook. So this way you can see it really breaks my posture, really angles me off. So being a striker predominantly, I had some trouble with the mechanics of this at first, but then I really started to get a feel of it. It's important to apply the pressure on his arm, make sure that you have it secured, create that angle, defend your legs, snap them down to the ground, break their posture. And then from there, you have different options. Once I started getting the movement down, then Kurang just showed me a couple different ways to advance positions, to take the back, to get the rear naked choke. Lots of specific details, but it was very interesting to hear how we can use the Muay Thai clinch safely and effectively in MMA. Hey guys, uh, three time new champion talking about how to defend against takedowns, working the Muay Thai clinch, and then setting up the rear naked shook. Awesome. Great stuff. Thank you. How long have you been training? And then, uh, four years? So for five days a week, he's training not only Muay Thai, what do you love the most? All right. You're martial artist. Martial artist? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Kurang. Guys, check out uh, all this information. Link is in the description below. Evolve as well. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.